We're talking Georgia State basketball this week on the Georgia State Sports Update. Head coach Ron Hunter is with us in studio as the Panthers get set for a Sunbelt Conference road trip to Texas. They'll take on Texas State and Texas Arlington. We're also talking volleyball with Beth Van Fleet. This week on the Georgia State Sports Update. and welcome into another Georgia State Sports Update. We're talking all things Georgia State, and we start out with Panther basketball. Georgia State head coach Ron Hunter with us in studio. Coach, great to have you here on another show. Tough one down in Statesboro. We got him in Atlanta, and then we had to go make that nice four-hour drive down south to a lovely Statesboro, and final score down there, 85-80. They were able to hold on in what was a close ball game. We'll, we'll get into it here a little bit, but a, a tough loss down there. Panthers have now lost two straight as we get set to go to Texas. Yeah. Yeah, we've uh, we've kind of lost our defense away, and and it really I thought it really started in that really the second half of the Little Rock game, and then we got to Lafayette, and and, and again offensively we've kind of we've kind of got to where we wanted to get to, but we were playing so great defensively that we've kind of slid a little bit more worried about our offensive end of the floor and what we're doing offensively than what's kind of got us to this point, and that was our defense. Yeah, you mentioned the uh, Georgia State win at Little Rock, and that ball game scored 81 points, holding Little Rock to 51. And then you look at the scores since then, scored 106 in the win over Louisiana Lafayette, but gave up 92, scored 82 in a loss to Louisiana Monroe, scored 90, and then gave up 85 the other night at Statesboro at Georgia Southern and scored 80. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's funny how when you're dealing with young people, they, they kind of get their mind wrapped up on something. And we kind of sold them that we're the, you know, we're the best defensive team in the league, and that's who we are, and that's what we want to be, one of the best teams in the country. And then all of a sudden we start scoring a few points, and, man, everybody forgot about the defensive part of it. So uh, we are quickly getting back to that. For us to get to the NCAA tournament, we know that we've got to get our defense back. And so uh, it's not that hard. It's just a mindset. we got to change the mindset. We know we can score the ball. Now we got to get back to sitting down, guarding people. Our rebounding has gotten better. Yep. Um, but our slides and some of the things that we normally have been doing great we're just not doing as well or we're not doing them well for 40 minutes we got to start the games our second halves have been pretty good defensively but we're starting the games for whatever reason just uh, not very well on, on the defense end and we got to change that well Georgia State I think had gone five or six straight games holding teams to under 40 percent mm -hmm. shooting right now as of this show it's right at 40 percent field goal defense down at Georgia Southern, there was a lot of energy in the building, mm -hmm. a sellout as it was when they came to Atlanta to play Georgia State in the sports arena. A lot of energy, national television, radio as well. Uh, so everybody really had the adrenaline flowing. Right. I mean, there was a lot of emotion in that ball game as well because of who it was, Georgia State and Georgia Southern, in the second meeting. And they got off to the early lead, and it seemed like we were, well, we were. We were constantly playing from behind. There were opportunities to, to get right back in there and take the lead. We could just seemingly never get over that, that small hump. Yeah, I, I, I thought again, I thought we, we, we played a way that we did not practice. Yeah. We played a way they want to talk about it. I said, okay, well, here's what we're going to do. And then lights, camera, action. As soon as the TV lights came on and the crowd and adrenaline, we started to think too fast. We started to play too fast. And so by the time we kind of settled into the game, in my opinion, this became too late. Now, we, 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 we fought hard. We did not play well at all in that game. There was only a couple – points where I thought, you know, it looked like our regular team. But I thought the environment, and more importantly, I thought the, the, the stage of the game, we let it affect us. We didn't do that any other time this year. Uh, maybe a little bit here when we play Lafayette, yeah. but we were able to overcome that. And so we got to do a better job of, of, of not letting the emotion of the environment kind of dictate how we want to play. And I thought that was too much in that game. Well, Malik Benlevy certainly had a lot of folks in the stands down at Hanner Fieldhouse uh, in his return over towards the coast. He's from uh, Savannah, mm -hmm. played at Jenkins High School there in Savannah, had a lot of folks out there to watch him. He leaves the arena with a double-double, 14 points, 12 rebounds, a block, and you played in the entire ball game. Yeah, you know, he, he's playing well. And I mentioned this year when everyone went home, we got beat. I went back to Dayton, we got beat. <laughs> Jeff went back home, he got beat. Malik goes back home, he gets beat. So no one's going home. I don't think anyone's from New Orleans, so I think we'll be safe with that. Uh, but every time we've sent someone home, uh, we, we haven't been able to win that game. And I think what happens, you get so, you're so hyped up and you want to win so bad that uh, you, you, don't, you don't perform as well. Well, only one time. We did go back to the state of Mass. Massachusetts, where I'm from, although I'm from the eastern part of the state, we did beat UMass. So that 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 could be that could count as maybe your one 
return to someone's home state Dave, and get out of there with a W. Dave, I didn't think <laughs> I, I didn't think about that. And and you I, like that though, don't you? No, I really I don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, so we'll, we'll, we'll take your win at the UMass. We'll, we'll, we'll get that. But outside of that, it hasn't been it hasn't been great when we sent someone back home. All right, well, the first time that Georgia State, Georgia Southern met, Tukey, Tukey Brown did not play, and he plays, obviously, in the second game, and he scores 23, mm -hmm. and he shows why he, along with DeMarcus and some of the other guys, Kevin Irvy, one of the better players in the Sun Belt. Yeah, he's a good player, and, and, and he played really well, and so uh, I thought we did a better job in the second half. We, we, you know, again, you know, the difference in the game with all the stuff, you know, I'm talking about defensively, but if we make free throws, right. we, we win the game. If we make free throws against Monroe, you win the game. So it's still sometimes just those little things that it didn't bother us when you won 10 in a row uh, that we got we, we to shore up. And we got to still do the little things. We got to make the free throws. We got to make timely free throws. And, but our defense has to still be there. And the free throw percentage had actually gone up mm -hmm. two percentage points, mm -hmm. and then it dropped back, I think, a couple of percentage points after uh, after the Georgia Southern game. Yeah, I mean, you know, again, I always talk about the guys that get to the line, the better free throw shooters. And we finally had, you know, Malik going two for four, great free throw shooter. And then, you know, DeMarcus, very good free throw shooter. In the last two games, he's really struggled from the free throw line. So, again, I, I think that's the ups and downs that you have in a year. Basketball season is such a long year. Yep. It's hard to sustain it for a long period of time. And so we still got four games left before we can get to the conference tournament. So a lot of basketball we play, we're having a great year, and, and we won't let anybody say we're, we're not. We're having a great year because our numbers indicate we're having a great year. Right. Uh, but what we want to do now, we got to finish this year off, and that's the one thing we're talking about right now, finishing the year off and finishing off in, in, in grand fashion. All right, 19 wins right now for Coach Hunter's ball club. Going to try to get that 20th win plus some on the road in Texas coming up this weekend. 85-80, the final score for Georgia State, Georgia Southern down at Hanner Fieldhouse. Georgia Southern unfortunately comes away with the win in the second meeting right now. Let's uh, take a look at some of the highlights from that game last week. Marcus Simons, who we're speaking of, 15 in black. This is Mitchell, a little far away. Baseline jumper. Money from Devin Mitchell. For Mike Hughes, number two in white and blue. Simons. Right around the defense. Ricky Brown. Long jumper. A three at the other end. Jeff Thomas. On the interior, Tyson. Big bucket for Georgia State. Mitchell. Thomas from the corner. Simons keeps it alive. Great hustle by Simons. Several syllables. Took me just two. The jam at the other end. To ten, ten rebounds. Simons. A rim rattler. Sports Center top ten nominee right there for Marcus Simons. Some of the highlights from Hanner Fieldhouse. Again, 85-80, the final score. Georgia Southern holds on for the win. Panthers going to look for their 20th win in the state of Texas. They've got Texas State coming up on Thursday night. UT Arlington in Arlington, Texas on Saturday. And uh, again, big road trip because there's only four games left in the regular season, which really seems, you know, you were saying right before we went to look at the highlights, uh, the fact that it's a long season. Yeah. And it just seems odd that we're saying already we're going into the final four games of the regular season uh, on the schedule. Yeah, and we want to make sure that we're going to New Orleans feeling really good about ourselves. And so, you know, the Texas trip's always a tough trip, you know, anyway, because we got two good teams. So we got to get back on that winning side. We got to get back on that defensive side where we, where we feel like we, we got that swagger going yep. into the tournament. I think that's really, really important uh, that you're going in playing well. And so uh, so that's kind of where we want to do. We also want to make sure we finish second. Uh, since we've been in the league outside of one year, we've been either first or second in the league. So we want to continue that streak to where we are. Uh, but more importantly, we want to go into this conference tournament knowing we can win it. We feel like we can win this tournament. Uh, the only the only loss Lafayette got is, of course, with us. And we've we've kind of had their number over the years in that regard. So we feel like uh, we, we feel pretty good about going into the tournament. I want to feel great going into the tournament. Right. And, and the way you do that is finish these four games off well, and, and, and then let's see what happens uh, uh, whenever, whenever it is. March, I don't even know when you play. With that. What's that Friday? You probably know. You're the... Um, well, March, so you didn't even know. March you know? 1 and 3 are the last games of the regular so season. Seven and eight. So March 7 and yeah, what, seven, seven, eight, nine, yeah, seven, eight, 9. Yeah, 7, 8, 9. So uh, we need to get ready for that. 
Well, you know, Coach, has, uh, in many interviews, we talk about peaking at the right time. Probably mm -hmm. under the headline of peaking at the right time is to get back to playing the kind of defense that you want them to play. You know the yeah. scoring is there. Yeah. As I said, those scores that I read mm -hmm. you in the first segment show us the scoring is yeah. there. It's the defense you want to get back to being at that under 40% defensive uh, field goal percentage as you head into the tournament. Yeah, and that's some that, that, there's some things that we got we might tweak a little bit to, yeah. to help us with that. But uh, we got to we got to get our great defenders playing great, and we got to get our poor defenders playing well. <laughs> you know, so so when you get those, and we had that for a while. Now we got to kind of tweak some things to get it back to that. But uh, I like this group. This is a resilient group. Uh, you know, they, they 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 tend to bounce back very well. And uh, I know the last time we lost two in a row, we ended up winning ten in a row. Right. And so uh, I think if we can uh, we come back, we we start another ten game winning streak. I think that puts us in the Sweet 16. Yeah, so be, let's see what yeah. happens with that. That'd be pretty good, wouldn't that'd it? That'd be sweet. There you go. And and the Sweet 16 game is where? In Atlanta. Oh, wow. Don't think I didn't think about that. So I would only give you like one ticket though. You only have one ticket. Radio guys get well, one well, ticket. That's probably all we would need. <laughs> <laughs> uh, again, talking to Georgia State's head basketball coach Ron Hunter as they get set to go to Texas. Uh, Texas State, one of those teams that uh, we beat by four when we played them in Atlanta. They like to keep it in the 50s. Yeah. 60s is a high-scoring game for those guys. Well, it's funny they they sit, they haven't won since they played us. And if you look at <laughs> when you look at their schedule a little bit, they've kind of gone through the same thing. Defensively, they haven't been the same team. They haven't kept a team in the 50s since us. And so during this streak that they've got, they they kind of their defense has kind of fallen apart. Now their 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 issues, they 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 got a fine line in between uh, their offense. They 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 don't. They they don't score as much as they would like to be able to score, but they are known for what they do defensively, and they haven't been they haven't been able to be the same defensive team. So uh, they're kind of going through that same thing we've gone through these last couple of games. All right. So uh, once they leave San Marcos, real quick, UT Arlington, and that's mm -hmm. kind of a, they're they're kind of a big mystery team this mm -hmm. year. All the preseason magazines, based on what they did last year, had them the preseason favorite. All all magazines had them pick number one, but it's just never they they did not get off on the right foot, and they can't seem to get back on the right foot. Yeah, I mean they even not. Conference. They play some. They beat St. Mary's. St. Mary's yep. is a really good team this year at St. Mary's, and so uh, Arlington is a very talented team. There's one of those teams that if they, you know, again, they probably look at if they could just be good for three days. You don't have to be good the entire year. You could just be average. But if you could be good for those three days in March, they get you into the NCAA tournament. Yep. And so that's you know, I've been in Lafayette shoes where you went 17 and one just a few years ago, thinking everything's going, and you have one bad half, man, you're done. You know, and you, now you're in NIT, and so I've been there, and I know the pressure that's put on that. And so, uh, you know, all the teams right now are thinking, you know, this part of the season, yeah, that's great. Those three days of March, when you're a mid-major, man, it comes down to those three games in March, and it used to be just two games for us. Right. You know, now you got to win the third game, and some places, I mean, some people got to win four. And so, uh, but that's what March is about. That's what makes it great. Uh, again, I like where we are. I like where we what we've done thus far, and we want to finish this year out strong. All right, Coach, as always, appreciate it. Let's go to the state of Texas and bring back wins 20 and 21. Sounds good, Dave. Let's go get some wins. All right, I want to thank Georgia State's head basketball coach, Ron Hunter, joining us here on the Georgia State Sports Update, as he does each and every week. Coming up, we're going to be talking volleyball with Beth Van Fleet here in the Georgia State Sports Update. We're back here on the Georgia State Sports Update. The weather has been warm in the Atlanta area the last few days, so of course we start thinking about uh, warmer weather sports, and that uh, allows us to bring in Beth Van Fleet. She's the head coach, beach volleyball, Georgia State University, and uh, great to see you since the last time you were a guest on the show. Yeah, thank you so much for having us back. We are absolutely loving the warmer weather. Um, our sand socks have gotten holes from all of the cold weather that we've gotten to go through this winter, so we're happy to have some sunshine. Well, you're, the start of your season is right around the corner, and uh, Right behind the Georgia State Sports Arena, downtown Atlanta, believe it or not, are sand volleyball courts. And every time I walk by, seemingly somebody is out there practicing. Yes, we, we practice often, and it's a very um, well-kept secret in downtown Atlanta. So many people come up to us still, and they're like, we had no idea these courts were here. We had no idea this was in downtown Atlanta. And I really think it brings a lot not only to our campus, but also for our student-athletes. All right, so what's the outlook this year for uh, beach volleyball at Georgia State? Again, nationally, especially on the East Coast, as we've talked before, it's mm -hmm. relatively new. Uh, Georgia State, a member of the uh, CCSA with a lot of good beach volleyball playing schools. Mm -hmm. You've got your hands full, and we'll talk about the schedule in a minute because I don't sure. know who, who came up with this schedule, but uh, <laughs> uh -oh. I think it was somebody sitting over here yeah, next to me. But uh, you've got a challenging early season schedule yes. right out of the gate for your squad. Yeah, absolutely. So um, with the CCSA, one of the things that we try to do is get a lot of CCSA match play early in the season. And so 
we just figured let's start strong. So um, we start off against South Carolina. We also play FSU, FAU, um, and all of those schools are ranked in the top 15. So it will be a very fun first weekend. Well, definitely uh, on the East Coast, when you talk about beach volleyball, the CCSA and the Atlantic Sun, and those longtime Georgia State fans remember the Atlantic Sun as the home for all of Georgia State, that uh, Georgia State's athletics back in the day before the Colonial Athletic Association, and now, of course, the Sunbelt Conference. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the A-Sun has a lot of good uh, beach volleyball programs as well as what we play in, which is the uh, CCSA. Exactly. So, in fact, this tournament, our first weekend, Stetson is hosting it, and they um, have generally won the A-Sun uh, competition, their tournament. So um, the A-Sun is definitely a strong conference on the East Coast. I would say CCSA is a little bit stronger. We just have a little bit more depth. But both conferences are certainly adding to the growth of the sport and creating opportunities for our student athletes. All right, let me ask you, though, from a strategy standpoint, um, everybody knows when you're at football practice, they're practicing plays, they're running routes, basketball sure. shooting free throws, they're running plays, they're doing slides for defense. At practice, mm -hmm. what are, when you, when you come out with that little note card of yeah. here's what we want to accomplish for the day, what are some of the goals for your girls each day in practice as you get ready. Yeah, so I think one of the really neat things about beach volleyball is when you sit on the sideline and watch it, it looks so simple. And there's actually so much that's going on with regard to defensive strategies, offensive strategies. We also have plays that will run. Um, it's just, it's not as obvious because there's only two people out there doing the work and there's not a lot of deception. And so we want to work on executing at a very basic level over and over and over. And we don't need to get super complicated if we can take care of the fundamentals and the basics. So um, we like to work on our first possession kills. So when you get served, can you put the ball away right away? Or do you have to go into a rally every time? With us going to Florida, it's gonna be 80 degrees down there. Yeah. We haven't seen 80 degrees <laughs> since maybe August or September. So we don't wanna get into very long rallies this upcoming weekend. We wanna finish plays quickly. So we've really been focusing on that from both a de defensive and offensive point of view. All right, again, you're going to open up down in Deland, Florida, Stetson University to the host. Real quick as we wrap yeah. it up, the first couple of matches are against two. We start off against South Carolina at 8 o'clock in the morning on the 23rd of February. So uh, very excited for that. That's all we're looking at right now. Um, we'll follow up with Stetson and then Eckerd, Florida State, and finishing off with FAU in our first weekend. But really focused on that first match at 8 a.m. All right, well, best of luck. Eat a good breakfast. Yeah, that morning. exactly. <laughs> All right, I want to thank Beth Van Fleet coming in, joining us. She played volleyball here at Georgia State. She's now back after playing professionally, and she's the head coach of beach volleyball here at Georgia State. We're so happy to have her with us in studio. We'll be watching all season. Well, coming up, we're going to talk to Daryl Lyons. He runs uh, the cheering squad at Georgia State, does a fantastic job, and he's going to join us next here on the Georgia State Sports Update. They're just back from a big-time competition. We're back here in the Georgia State Sports Update and pleased to be joined right now by Daryl Lyons. He's the head coach of the Georgia State cheerleading squad, the dance team, and the mascot. And that is, of course, Pounce. And, uh, Daryl, great to have you this week with us on the show. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. In order, before you bring the trophy up, <laughs> you guys just back from the Cheer Sport National Championships right here in right. Atlanta down at the Georgia World Congress Center and uh, a third place finish for the Georgia State squad. Absolutely. Look and at this trophy. Yeah, it's funny. This trophy is bigger than the one <laughs> we, we won the competition in 2016, and this trophy is actually bigger than that one it was. So, yeah, we're, we're really excited to, to have this and to be honored with this. All right, so talk a little bit about the competition and how how Georgia State's squad was able to finish third and what the what is the competition? What, what different events encompass this whole event? Right, okay, so in 2016, they actually had a um, college division. And uh, so there were five other teams with us, including Georgia Tech. And so we won and beat all of those teams. So we were national champions that year. And then uh, last year, they decided to eliminate that, um, that division. And um, so they decided to go ahead and um, we, we decided to go ahead and actually join the club division, which is teams that typically compete all the time so they're not affiliated with a school so us and actually savannah state were the only two teams in it that are school affiliated uh, programs and so we uh, competed in that division and remarkably we got third place 
you know, competing against basically professionals. I mean, these people have been doing their same routine since September. And so we, as a program, as a team, we came together at the end of, you know, right around the holidays, right when we got back from the bowl game and started, you know, choreo choreography. We had a choreography weekend and then we started practicing pretty much daily, you know, early mornings and in the afternoons and everything to prepare for this competition. So in the last two months, I feel I'm, I'm very excited about this this third place because I feel like the kids pulled it together through all the obstacles, through all of the, the drama and the stress and the pressure of it all. They came together on Sunday afternoon and, and looked great. So I'm, I'm very proud of them. Well, congratulations again to the Georgia State cheerleading squad and, and everything that encompassed that competition. Uh, busy time of the year. There's really never an off season in cheerleading. I know when I'm sitting courtside uh, at basketball games, they're in front of me for, I guess, part of the game. Every time there's a timeout, I've, got, I've got folks in front of me. Uh, the athleticism that goes into what they are doing uh, game in and game out is incredible. Exactly, and, and we, we appreciate that. Um, a lot of the things that we do at the games, um, they are difficult sometimes, but they're not as difficult as what we do at competition. So that's what a lot of people don't understand, that we do a lot of different things, not only just the competition aspect, we also are ambassadors for the university, brand ambassadors. We go out to a lot of community service events and stuff like that, and we practice and perform and get ready for like the competition we just did. And you know, obviously our number one goal or our number one number one number one job is to support Georgia State Athletics. So we're you know, we're the number one fans for football, basketball, volleyball, all the all the sports that we cover, you know. So we're just excited to be there and help out. I would guess that uh, the toughest part of your job is just managing pounce. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, because he's a wild cat. Yeah, not a wild cat, that's per se. Yeah. But yeah, Pounce the Panther, is, uh, he has a lot of appearances. I mean, actually today is GSU Day at the Capitol, and he was there earlier this morning. We had to get him ready for that. But pretty much at least two to three times a week, there's something for Pounce to do, uh, along with the cheerleaders. I mean, the cheerleading yeah. requests aren't as great as Pounce, but everybody wants Pounce at the birthday party, their grand opening, you know, whatever's going on, people want their picture with Pounce. So, And we love that. We love to do it. All right, Daryl, congratulations. Great to have you here in the show and so uh, continued success. Absolutely. To so say Thank we'll be so watching, much. but we are watching all the Absolutely. time. Absolutely. Yeah, you yeah. can't not watch. Yeah, it's downhill to Nolan now yeah. and the NCAAs, hopefully. Let's. Fingers crossed. We'll All right. I want to thank Daryl Lyons for joining us here on the Georgia State Sports Update. Again, he's the head coach of the Georgia State cheerleading squad, the dance team, and, of course, he oversees Pounce. I want to thank him for joining us this week in the show. Our final segment, we're talking football. So great to see former Panther Robert Davis back on campus. He was a draft selection of the Washington Redskins, one of four Panthers currently on a roster in the National Football League. And we had a chance to get some feedback and, and talk to Robert about his experience in four years at Georgia State and uh, how it's gotten him to where he is today. Robert Davis going to take it all the way. Touchdown! There it is. Caught! Touchdown, Georgia State! Robert Davis arrived at Georgia State as an unheralded recruit from Warner Robins, Georgia, and a raw athlete who caught just a handful of passes in his career at Northside High School. But in four seasons in Panther Blue, the 6'3", 220-pound wideout set every Georgia State receiving record and starred in every highlight reel. Davis was selected in the sixth round of the 2017 NFL Draft, and he's now a member of the Washington Redskins. To hear my name called on draft day is, is a feeling that I really couldn't even explain. I mean, it's one of those things that you, you dream about from, you know, a little kid, you know, and you watch the draft every year. I've watched the draft every year since I was probably seven or eight years old and just had that dream of, dang, one day, well, I mean, I want to hear my name called and have my family all around me and, you know, things of that nature. But it, it was a surreal experience and it was just a blessing from God. I feel like Georgia State really prepared me for the NFL. I mean, like I said earlier, I had a great group of, of coaches here and coaches who had NFL playing experience and NFL coaching experience. So they were able to give me the best of both worlds from, you know, from both mindsets. So I definitely feel like the coaching that I got here prepared me for the NFL. Just right now with me being in the off season, I try to come up here every day when I do my workouts and um, just give back to them and be able to show them what I learned, you know, from being in the NFL. And then, I mean, you got guys like Shannon Sullivan, you know, who just graduated from Georgia State, who have a great opportunity to go into the NFL. And I just try to, you know, 
be that backboard for him that he can lean on for any type of advice or anything of that nature. So, I mean, I have a lot of love for the people here and I have a lot of love for, you know, my brothers here. So I just try to help them as much as I can. Of course, I wasn't out here on the field with those guys. So, I mean, I give them and, you know, Coach Sean Elliott all that, you know, that credit. But just as far as me leaving my legacy here, I, I hope that that was able to, you know, kind of thrust, you know, especially the receiving core, I hope that I was able to thrust them forward and, you know, some of the teachings that I taught them. I mean, I like to take credit for some of that, but as far as, you know, them going out on the field and lacing the cleats up, that was that was all them, and I'm just proud to say I went here. It's crazy to see, you know, how far a program can come in, you know, such a short period of time, and, you know, just from not even having our own stadium and, you know, having a locker room like this, it's just amazing to me, you know, and like I said, again, it's just a blessing to say that I went to Georgia State. I really enjoyed my four years, really the best four years of my life, I can honestly say, were spent, you know, here at Georgia State. I feel like it's an honor. It's an honor to be, you know, able to say that, you know, I went to a school like Georgia State, you know, like I said, I was able to play Division One football, and I know that if I, you know, decide to go on to other endeavors in life, I'll have a great opportunity because of the degree I got here at Georgia State. Great things were happening. Everywhere we went into was uh, real receptive. The Georgia State football name was out there. I mean, I, I went in a couple places, uh, a lot in this state, but I mean, even out of state, Mobile, Alabama, Tallahassee, Florida, and I'm walking into a restaurant, I'm walking into a, a convenience store, and they're, they're like, Georgia State football, great bowl win, you know, what a great season. And that was, you know, I turned and looked at our sister, I said, listen, the word's getting out about this place. So. Uh, the bowl win was huge. And now we've had the time after a successful season and they can see the growth and the change in our program uh, to, to see how we're moving forward. And everything that I talked about a year ago is, is coming true. And everything that we talked about in this recruiting cycle is coming true. And um, it's just a really good feeling to know that you can go into a home and say, listen, this is what I said a year ago. This is what we did. You always want to develop the offensive and defensive line. You always want to have I call them uh, instant playmakers, uh, guys that can do things really with little to no help. Maybe a, a great wide receiver can take it and turn a, a five-yard hitch into a 60-yard gain or a running back and make safeties miss. But uh, we really focused on, uh, if you notice, we signed three running backs in this class, and that was huge for us. I thought we needed that guy could really take it the distance, and uh, the three running backs that we signed uh, certainly can. And, you know, everything's a critical need. Offensive, defensive line, secondary, linebacker, whatever it may be, quarterback, they're all pressing needs. But uh, I feel like that those three running backs there are going to have a chance to come in here and, and really compete and, and get some playing time right away. We've been gone, and our, our staff, let me say this, our staff did an excellent job. And people really don't understand the times that they spent away from their families. They don't understand that they're, they have children at home. And, and those are tough times. I mean, there's times their wives need them at home. And there's times that they need to be at home. And, and you know, this profession, you, you really can't do that unless it's just a, a, a trying time and you have to be back. But, uh, you know, they did an outstanding job of going and delivering the message of Georgia State football and everything that we want to, to move forward with. And, and I'm so proud of them. Always great to have former Panther Robert Davis back on campus. And when you talk about National Signing Day for Georgia State, a great success story out of Northside Warner Robins. Uh, he comes to Georgia State and again now in the National Football League with the Washington Redskins. So again, thanks to Robert Davis. Great show this week. Want to thank head basketball coach Ron Hunter, beach volleyball coach Beth Van Fleet, and Daryl Lyons, the cheerleading coach, joining us this week. And uh, we're here each and every week talking all things Georgia State Athletics. We're back next week for the entire crew. I'm Dave Cohen. Thanks for watching the Georgia State Sports Update.